everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. I am at the Palos Verdes Art Center where we are going to join the community as they take part in the center's annual Palos Verdes Homes Tour. This is like our 34th Homes Tour. Uh, we're sold out, the buses are running well, the homes are gorgeous and the food and everybody's happy. Yes, yes, hundreds of happy guests stepped inside three spectacular oceanside homes, all in Portuguese Bend, all on the PV Homes Tour. The first stop is the historic Villa Narcissa, once owned by the peninsula's famous founder, Frank Vanderlip. Frank's granddaughter, Katrina, was excited to lead groups around the Italian-style villa built as a guest house in 1924. The depression ended her grandfather's plans to build a grand villa on the estate, and the guest house was given in 1946 to her parents as a wedding present and remains the family home she shares with her three siblings today. It goes way back to the original vision of my grandparents that went to Italy and see Hiltaisen when they first got out here on the peninsula, they said this is just like the Amalfi Coast, we have to recreate an Italian feeling. They hired the Olmsted firm who did Central Park and designed this whole estate here that starts up at the top of our Cypress Alley and goes all the way down to Abalone Cove, which was their private beach. If you're in Abalone Cove, you can even see the, the stone picnic area there. As we stand here with this gorgeous Villa Narcissa behind us, just explain like what we're, you know, the beauty of this, of this spectacular guest house. Okay, well the guest house was a guest house. And you, when you, if you go inside, you can see the staircase was outside. It was just three bedrooms with a little kitchen, a little dining room as a guest house. And there were going to be several guest houses on the possibly because people came by train from New York for, for a vacation. Then my parents started having children, and in those days they had a cook that lived over there, and there was a butler, and there were nurses and things they needed more space. So they put the facade on here, put the Della Robbia, and enlarged out this way. So this whole house had enough bedrooms for four children. And you grew up in this house? Yes and no. I grew <laughs> up in this house. My father died when my twin brother and I were four, my sister was six, and my older brother was eight. So we were four children or four years, which was a lot for my mother to handle. And after a year, she took us to Europe for one year to sort of cheer up and feel better because she was heartbroken when my father died. And uh, she ended up finding that the dollar was strong and the Swiss franc was low and the schools were better and we stayed there for eight years. So I came back when I was 14. Went to Palos Verdes High School where I was in class with Dan Pinkham and here we are doing art weeks together. So, you know, it all ties together. And you're starting to share the home with the community. You're gonna be in the PV Home Store. When people come through, what are they gonna see? They'll see all the portraits in the living room. They're gonna come in through this courtyard here come into the house, get an explanation on the hall, walk through the library, which is quite amazing. It's got all of these. Uh, my grandfather opened up the bank in for First National City Bank in Japan, and he took his eldest daughter and my grandmother over, who fell in love with all his Japanese art. So they brought it back, and it's actually an opium bed that's been turned into the bookshelf. So it's a really sort of exotic looking library. And then we're going into the living room where we have all the family portraits and this all this wonderful Renaissance furniture. And then you look into the dining room, which I think is the most wonderful dining room. You know, it's got a long table from the Renaissance. All of the furniture dates from the early 17th century, original Italian furniture. Some of the pieces have been copied and are in Malico Cove Library because my grandfather brought over craftsmen to do it. But most of the pieces that we have are just gorgeous. The grounds, the basic Cypress Alley was a design by the Olmsted firm. And actually, if you look at that plan I told you that's interpreted center, you will see this there down there, there was going to be a second Cypress Alley. This is a classic Italian villa. You know, you need a vista so that you have this feeling of space. And it is probably, I think, unprejudiced, the best view in Southern California. When you get up there, you can see all the way down, you can see the water breaking on the cliffs down at Portuguese Bend and you get perfectly lined up with Catalina Island. It's magical up there. How many steps? <laughs> 268 and all of us when we were younger teenagers could run to the top of the steps. Mother kept us very fit also. She made us, you know, it was her nanny. We would all go down to Abalone Cove to where there's the, the passageway and jump in the water, swim around the rocks to the beach every day. And so, you know, we were, we were fit back then. But anyway, that part 
Then we, when we came back from Europe, mother started putting in more. Here there was just one pepper tree and grass. Mother put in this parterre. She'd seen all these European things. She put in the swimming pool. Uh, during my junior year in Florence, she came over to visit me and we went to Imprutinetta and bought all of these statues all over the garden. Originally there had been four little, four seasons and they were stolen when we were in Europe. So she didn't just replace them. She she went to town on them. <laughs> there, there are plenty of them. Back in the day for years has always been this myth that, that here at the Vanderlips there's ghosts. There was nothing to do when we moved back from Europe. We'd been in Europe eight years, the house had been rented, and there was it was the only old house around. So, you know, it just takes one person to start a rumor and whatever. What did kids do in the 60s or the early 70s? There was nothing. There was no bar, there was no cafe. You know, there was no terrain or whatever. And so the big thing to do, and the firemen were describing it to me the other day, he did the same thing, you know. You'd creep up the driveway, and some of his friends had creeped up ahead of time and jumped out of him. He said he never ran so fast in his life. They never got up to the house. But I, there, we all have stories. <laughs> you're sharing all these stories. You know, the story of your grandfather is remarkable. We all know he bought Palsbury's Peninsula over 100 years ago, sight unseen. Talk about that legacy, what you want the community to understand about what Frank Vanderlip was all about and what he did here. Well, I think that it's not just Frank Vanderlip. I think you have to talk about Narcissa Vanderlip at the same time. Narcissa Vanderlip went to the University of Chicago when no woman went to university. She was the first head of the League of Women Voters of New York because she was a suffragette. And if you go on Eleanor Roosevelt's website or book or read that, she was the first person to invite Eleanor Roosevelt out to lunch and say, you're a young woman and your husband's in politics, you have to support women's causes. And she introduced her to everybody and got her on her way. Katrina, an artist and author, has started the Vanderlip Heritage Fund to help preserve the property and the Vanderlip legacy. She's been hosting artist workshops and events at the Villa Like the Home Store, receiving great community support. You want to know about the Vanderlip Heritage Fund? We now have just set up, my son and I, because he's the computer things, a website for Villa Narcissa, and we are going to set up very soon one for the Vanderlip Heritage Fund, but there will be a link from the Villa Narcissa site. But the Vanderlip Heritage Fund is not just to help the Villa Narcissa. As I say, I want to tie together all of these, Vander the whole heritage. It's the beginning of what made us paradise. This is so spectacular that this is the first home on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. And the fact that they want to perpetuate the legacy that this has created is a, spe it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for the city and the community to be able to get a part of history and, and savor it. Little tour inside. I'm going to start by the family portraits because we're lucky enough to have a lot of them. This is my grandfather, Frank A. Vanderlip, uh, who was president of the First National City Bank, and everybody knows is the one who got us the peninsula. Then this is his sister, Ruth, and the, the Ginsburgs have bought the gatehouse that my s grandfather's sister lived in, and this was Ruth. And then over on this side is their mother. And I, I'm an art restorer. I haven't cleaned this one, so it's a little bit darker. But uh, it's really quite lovely because my grandfather took care of her all the way through. She was widowed when he was 14, and he supported both his sister and his aunt and his mother. And uh, it's actually a very nice story. This is my father. There was an artist that painted all the ch Vanderlip children, and this is my father when he was probably like 11 or 12 or something, and he, he's with St. George and the Dragon, you know, in the sailor suit. Just which, He was born the night the Titanic went down 1912, so this is probably done just before the house was built in the early 20s. And this is by a very good French artist called Malel, and everybody loves it. He did, he, he's, he liked only to paint people with personality, so he liked my mother and asked her to pose, and he did two portraits of her, and once in the other part of the house. She loved blue, so you can see he got plenty of blue in there. And that's me, that's my twin brother, so Narcissa, Kelvin, Henrik, and Katrina. So w one thing that shows you that the furniture is early 17th century is this is actually engraved 1605 on this piece of furniture. This long table here is sort of totally typical of a uh, monastery and it's wonderful because you sit very close to each other and have these great conversations. 
And these two horses are wonderful. They're from when uh, Bertolucci and my mother were allowed into the Imperial Palace storeroom during the filming of The Last Emperor. Uh, they were allowed to buy things from the Imperial Storeroom way back in the 80s. Talk about you as an artist, what you do. You've illustrated some local children's books here for the community to um, check out. So talk about your art. And, of course, you've been the curator of what's been at the PD Art Center as well, um, about a, a lot about Portuguese Ben. Well, my, uh, my art is that simply I was restoring paintings for years, and I've been very lucky. I've worked in great museums from the Louvre to the Getty. But... Suddenly, when mother died, and my husband died three months later, I started painting because Mary Jo Hazard wanted her things, things, and I started doing it. It took me years to get my peacock book thing out, whatever. I finally did it this year, but I suddenly realized it made me feel better. It made me feel good to be creative again, and after all these years of fixing other people's paintings, hey, I could paint. I mean, I'd gone to fine arts in college, and it just made me happy. All right, Eric, we meet here on the Home Store. You've been on this before. Why do you come out? What do you enjoy about this? I enjoy supporting the, the Art Center here in Palos Verdes. I'm a long-term resident for 42 years in Rolling Hills Estates, and it's a beautiful way to spend an afternoon for a good cause, and you get some great ideas and tips on gardens and homes. And, of course, here we are at a historic Vanderlip property. What are you looking forward to being right here? You know, Vanderlip is the initial history of the peninsula, so being here, I've been here once before, but it was many, many years ago. So I was really looking forward to being here this afternoon, really learning the history, you know, seeing that it's still so well preserved, and it's just, again, a beautiful day to enjoy this beautiful historical estate. Oh, it's, it's an event we look forward to every year. We work ourselves crazy to put it on, but we get so much enjoyment out of it, seeing all our friends, all the people come through, and see uh, being in this beautiful home. I mean, how, how could it not be wonderful just all day long to pretend I'm a Vanderlip? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, for you all, the docents, I mean, you, you have to you learn, have a script and you have to learn. What, what did you learn about the property? Well, we've lived here about 20 years on the peninsula. We live in Rolling Hills Estate, so uh, we've been familiar with the Vanderlips and you know it's kind of like Palos Verdes royalty so you glean things here and there but this is really an intimate view and to get to meet Katrina that's a special special deal. Just down the road from the Villa Narcissa is the next stop on the homes tour. Author and photographer Lynn Doran welcomes guests to her rustic beach house overlooking the Portuguese Bend Beach Club. It is filled with tribal art and stories from all over the world. Talk about why you decided to open up your house and what's here for the community to see as they come through. Well, I, about 11 years ago, the house was on the tour for the Art Center. And since then, I've, I've redone the house. Every surface was changed. The art collection has changed somewhat. Opened up all the doors and windows to the view. And they asked me if I would put my house on the tour again. And I've always been a supporter of the Art Center. I love taking classes up there. And I like showing, sharing my art collection with people. So it's a lot of art that people would never see otherwise. You have an incredible collection of a lot of tribal art. Talk about what's here in From Room to Room. I, I love a mix of, of contemporary and tribal. I like contrast. Like, for example, in the living room, we have a Corbusier couch, which is kind of a classic art piece couch sitting off of a... A, a throne couch from Bali, the, the coffee table in the middle, <coughs> excuse me, is an old tienda table from Mexico. Robert Longo, lithograph on that wall, next to an, um, a mask from the island of New Britain, another dance suit from Mexico. On this wall, there's a Frank Romero, with sitting off of some wonderful collectible pieces from West, old pieces from West Africa. So I just love the mix of things. I can't imagine how many countries you've gone to to pick up these pieces. <laughs> a lot. A lot a lot of very remote trips. I used to be able to field collect a lot and when I would go somewhere you could actually find something in a village out, you know, on the street whatever. It's pretty much the world's been scoured a lot and you now it's not as easy to find. So you have to look a little harder. For example, can I turn? Yes. These three rock heads on the dining room table I found in the islands of Wanawatu, and they were on an island in the dirt. You know, I'm walking through the village, saw them in the dirt, dug them up. They were willing to sell them to me. I took them back to the boat, and the captain of the boat and, and Jungle George, his crew, as he referred to him, were totally superstitious. They did not want them on the boat. And I said, well, you know, I'll just wrap them in some towels and rags and I'll put them out on the deck. 
finally convinced them if I wrapped them up, put them in this cabinet, they would let me keep them on the boat. But it, it's, it's fascinating to me to see cultures so different from ours and how people live so differently from us at this very same point in time. I can come back to all my comforts, you know, a shower, hot water, running water, food, um, multiple choices at a market of food. You know, we're, we're, we're so lucky. You are an artist, and one of the countries you visited was Ethiopia. Tell me about the book that, that's here today. The, the, I went to the Omo Valley in Ethiopia, and it, I, I looked for three years to find the trip to go there because I wanted total immersion with the tribes. And so we camped on the riverbank for three weeks with the tribes, and beautiful, beautiful people. And when I was there, their culture was still intact, and they were living the life they've always lived. I decided to publish the book when I got home because I heard the dam was completed, the water's been diverted, and they're destitute. And I wanted people, I wanted to share how beautiful their life was when they were living the way they had always lived. Yeah. The community can pick up your book, which is good, and they can see and they can share. Yes, the, my book is on my website, lindoran.com. It's on Amazon. For these two days during the Homes Tour, it's here or at the Arts Center, and part of the proceeds is being donated to the Arts Center. The next group is re getting ready to come to this spectacular home. Just this view is just like breathtaking and so restful. What do you love about being in your home? Everything. <laughs> every, the, the view changes daily, but you know, it just every minute it changes. When the storms come in in the winter, it's like you see them coming across the ocean and bam, hitting the window. It's fabulous. And at nighttime, the, I have no window coverings, I'm sure if you've noticed, because I, I just want to see it all. Well, this is the end of the tour as, as, as they come through this house very quickly. The artifacts are a blend of Lynn's work um, in the studio. The guest room is a combination of her own talents and her eye from Rosarito Beach to the Long Beach swap meets. Uh, it's an, a terrific house to be a docent in. And being a docent for uh, the Art Center has been something I've done the last seven years and really love and enjoy doing it. What do you enjoy about doing this? Um, I, it's a get, get to see people within the peninsula you know, uh, but sharing uh, someone else's uh, environment with people that may never have seen this. The views are terrific and the artwork is exceptional. The third stop on the home tour takes us to a stunning 21st century contemporary home, high on the cliffs above Abalone Cove. From floor to ceiling, it's covered with art created by the owner artist Patty Woods, a well-known muralist who grew up on the peninsula. You're gonna be on the Homes Tour. How did you get into this and, and what are you looking forward to? Oh gosh, how did I get into this? Um, Ann Buxton and Gail Johnson asked me uh, if I would be willing to do it and I said yes, this is my yes year. So it was on the spot, spontaneous, and I'm excited to do it. Well, your house is absolutely beautiful. When people come through, how are, how are they gonna move through? <laughs> from the front to the back in a big circle. Give us a sneak preview of what they might be seeing. A lot of water, a lot of blue, um, Palos Verdes uh, native plants, and uh, the inspiration point. And speaking of inspiration, there's so much art here. It's all you. So just share with us about like just where we are right now. What's going on here? <laughs> this is my cabana room, and most of the pieces on the wall up here, uh, the the mermaids, the Pacific Islanders, are all created in the ceramics class at the Arts Center in the independent studio class with Jeff. So I went through uh, a couple of big health scares and was unable to do muraling, so I started by carving small tile just to keep my mind occupied. I've worked uh, in art for over 40 years in this area. A lot of people probably will remember me from their faux finishing or uh, design work, I do a lot of different types of things. Why are you giving back to the Art Center? I know this is important for you. I love people. I love running into old friends. Um, I ran into my best friend from high school and roommate from college at one of the home tours. So it's, it's an opportunity to reconnect with our neighbors, to get to know people, and to spread art therapy. What's interesting about the Patty Woods home, which I love, is that it's 95% it's Patty Woods. You know, um, she's done it all. She has an engineering 
degree, an industrial engineering degree, an art degree. She works with every kind of medium. And that's what makes this house special, is because it's 95% Patty. You know, she's a wonderful seamstress, a sewer. She does the press and mold, she does vases, she does paintings, she does it all. And we're so lucky because she owns all the way down to the mean high tide line. So Patty Woods has found many special treasures, which she has very generously given to the Point Vincenti Interpretive Center. And, um, you know, instead of hoarding it, you know, she shares it. I've been the homes coordinator for about the last three years. I, I love doing it. It's, you know, it's now it's kind of a piece of cake because I'm, I'm so used to doing it. It's 300, 400 hours that we put in and we all coordinate. There's probably a hundred of us that are all helping. Um, and so, for example, I was staging the houses on Thursday and then I'm house mother number two here at the Patty Woods house helping out. So it's been fun. You know, you get to relax and entertain people and that's, that's what's fun about it and it seems to be a success. What I love about the Homes Tour is the incredible dedication of all of the Circle ladies. They work so hard and what they do for us is phenomenal because all of the money that they raise goes towards the educational programs for the Palos Verdes Arts Center. This art center is an anchor in this community. With this beauty all around you, you're bound to attract artists. And they needed a place. They started in the Malaga Cove Library. And after, I think it was about five or six years, a group of women who wanted to support it came together and said, we'll call ourselves the Circle. And I think uh, the cause that we believe is, of course, the art and the artists in this community, but it's the education that the Art Center provides. We now take art into public schools on the peninsula and in the South Bay to 7,000 students. What do you like about art? Um, well, I like it because it it's pretty. <laughs> I like coming here because you can see um, what people have made and besides yourself and how they see the world. You want to see what kind of talent that we have up here on the peninsula, please come and check it out and maybe you'll find something that you would like to add to your own collection. Of course, if you're a member of the Art Center, do you get a discount still? Absolutely, yes, this is one of the perks. So we really love to have people come and join our membership because you don't just get a discount in the store, you also get a discount on your classes. Because this is a very important fundraiser, but also it's a very important friend raiser in the sense that lots of people come on the tour that aren't familiar with the Arts Center and all of a sudden they get to see what a beautiful center we have and also the very kind people that loan their houses for the tour, active in our community. And so it's really a, a special opportunity to have people come and have lunch here and buy different things from the various vendors. There's some great vendors here. Now, what do you enjoy most yourself personally about being part of this art center? Well, I've learned so much because I, I took, the first class I ever took was here. And, uh, so, and I've taken a number of other classes. I've taught classes here. And uh, there's a lot of really good people. You notice how many hard people, hard working people we have that are volunteers. We're very blessed with great volunteers. This is your first time, Wendy, coming on the home store. What'd you think of it all? I loved it. It was really fun. We got to see things we would normally not have access to. We got to go to the Vanderlip Estate, which is really off limits. Um, Katrina Vanderlip was there and told us about the foundation that she has to raise money to maintain the estate. The money from the tours of all of these fabulous homes goes for the Art Center and for Art at Your Fingertips, a cause that is near and dear to my heart. I'm a retired teacher. We got to see artists' homes, um, Lynn Duran's home, which uh, was the most um, die and gone to heaven home you know, overlooking Portuguese Bend and um, most wonderful artifacts that she's gathered from all over the world, plus her own art. Uh, we got to go to Patty Wood's home. Patty was an artist and did amazing things. It's just really fun. Beautiful day, beautiful people, wonderful lunch by Lisa's Bon Appetit, and it was great. Come to our event next year. Uh, we were sold out for tickets this year. So get your tickets early. We'll have three great houses again, good food. And um, once you come over here and, and you see what we do, 
uh, you'll, you'll want to support the Art Center. And membership is only $60 for a year. And we have fabulous exhibitions here every six weeks. And it's just a fun, wonderful, stimulating place to come. What a very special day today on this Homes Tour. If you want to find out about all the happenings here at the Art Center, log on to pvartcenter.org. I'm Liz Brown Swanson with Around the Peninsula. See you next time. Thanks for joining us.